Pro wrestling is an ever-evolving industry, with encyclopedias being updated, documentaries being released, and relationships mended or destroyed. The attitudes and narratives of wrestling superstars begin to change. Individuals like The Ultimate Warrior, Bruno San Martino, and others are brought back into prominence while the history of some of the other bright characters are being washed away or changed. Some are pigeonholed and being remembered for that one event or that one specific moment in time. Others become as insignificant as a crossword answer. My job as PWP's resident historian is to remind you of the impact that these individuals and teams left on the industry. This is PW Profiles. When a lot of people speak on Andre the Giant, uh, one of the bigger things they mention is how before he signed to the WWF, he was kind of a journeyman. It was the attraction. He'd come in, he'd clear house, and then he'd leave before really getting associated with the championship. Someone else who did this was none other than Abdullah the Butcher. Abdullah the Butcher, the madman from Sudan. Uh, is this is this a gentleman that you're familiar with at all? Uh, I knew that uh, he made Superstar Billy Graham sell his Hall of Fame ring. We did, we did talk about that on the Billy Graham episode. Yes. Um... Abdul is uh, he's quite a character. Um, there's probably a reason Superstar did sell his ring because of it. I like to compare Abdullah to the hardcore Andre, as although he would travel from territory to territory, if it wasn't for his wrestling skills, he'd come in and have bloody brawls against the likes of Carlos Colon, Bruiser Brody, Cactus Jack. Abdullah the Butcher saw them all, even the original Sheik. Uh, his career spanned. He was in WCW, WCCW, and ECW. Uh, he retired in 2019. Uh, he actually got his Hall of Fame ring from WWE in 2011. And his biggest claim to fame was being, you know, Bruiser Brody's biggest opponent before Bruiser Brody passed away. These two had a rivalry that spanned continents, and it was bloody. There's Abdullah's one of those wrestlers. You know Dust, how Dusty Rhodes had the scarring on his forehead? Um, Abdullah the Butcher's forehead is much worse, and it's because he took forks, wood, all sorts of objects. In the Bruiser Brody dark side of the ring, he wanted fans to know, don't ever say that him and Bruiser Brody wrestled. They're not wrestlers. He knew karate. He would fight you. So Abdullah had no qualms about going in there and just kicking someone's ass. Uh, probably his most mainstream recognizable appearances was in WCW. He was brought out in a box um, by Cactus Jack to attack Sting. He's also in that ill-fated Halloween Havoc match where he was put in an electric chair and supposedly shocked. Uh, I also learned of Abdullah through the Legends of Wrestling series. He was actually an unlockable character which made sense just because of how... Like I said, he wasn't mainstream, but he was a legend. Duel of the Butcher is a hardcore forefather. I'd put him up there with the Sheik, with Terry Funk. And although he's had some bumps in the roads, like appearing at the Heroes of Wrestling event, fighting the one-man gang, uh, it's going to happen with a long career. Not everything's going to be perfect, you know, not everyone could be Sting. But Abdul the Butcher has certainly left his mark on the industry, especially with being given that Hall of Fame ring and not even appearing for the WWE. But it is because of his hardcore wrestling, his bloody feuds with Bruiser Brody and Carlos Colon, that Abdul the Butcher is a PW profile.